model prayer as a, as a backdrop. I've covered the I've covered two lessons. One, I, 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 as a prelude, I talked about how we ought not pray. And then I uh, I talked about some principles of prayer on uh, last Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday, we're going to begin with the B part of Matthew 6, verse 9b. The A part say, pray after. Pray ye after this manner. The B part say our Father. And that, that, that's all I'm going to, to deal with. Is our Father. Now, teach us how to pray. Pray after this manner. Our Father. And, and, and uh, that's how it getting comfortable with God. We do not have to approach God, and He does not want us to approach Him, as if He is some old gray-headed man in a distant land, sitting in a rocking chair, uh, waiting to zap us. And Jesus said this, and, and you know, we grew up reciting our Father, which I didn't have. It seemed real common to us. But this was a bombshell to the Jew that lived in Jesus' day to call God Father. They considered the name God to be so holy that they would not even pronounce it. And, 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 when they prayed in the Old Testament, they wouldn't dare call God Father. They'd say Lord God, but they wouldn't say Yahweh, Lord God. And that's where they began their prayer. Jesus says, when we pray, pray out of this manner, our Father. Now, you have often heard me as I pray, thank God for being the kind of God that we can have a relationship with. For the privilege of calling you Father. <coughs> and for you accepting us as your children. Now in uh, the book of Romans and the book of Galatians, Ephesians 2, when Paul talks about it in the word that Jesus really used when he said for was Abba, Father. And Abba is uh, aromatic and it really translated, the best translation for it is Daddy or Papa. But theologians believe that that's getting too common with God. And <clears throat> what they teach us is dearest father. Dearest father. What I want to argue briefly is that growing up whatever you saw me doing in the present of my dad. You could bet that I was on my best baby. In the present of, and, and, and uh, I've never been in any trouble, but I don't do any credit for it because we grew up in the, in the cotton field. And you pick a cotton, mom over here, and dad over there. And when it like that, such black, you're not going to get into much. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we didn't go to school that much. 
And so all them days, all day, every day, we're right there in the presence of our dad. And, and I believe that one ought to be on his best behavior in the presence of his or her father. Now, that's your earthly father. And I get into this next week because even though we had a privilege to call him father, we must understand that he's more than just a an earthly father. But what baffles my mind now about us and our behavior? I'm going to use this as an analogy. Christians who drink, and there are many, they will send somebody else to the liquor store. <laughs> To buy that liquor because they don't want to be seen in the liquor store. If God, your father, and you're going to be on your best, aid, best behavior in his presence, he knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, a, a Sunday I'll argue briefly that. For me to be more concerned about you seeing me doing something than I am about God seeing me doing something mm -hmm. is kin to our worship. Mm -hmm. Because I'm more concerned about you than I am about God. Mm -hmm. So we can have a family relationship with God. And he wants us to have that kind of relationship. Prayer is a privilege. It's a family privilege. And we demonstrated earlier that if you are not a, a saint or a Christian, then the devil is your father. And when you say our father, you're not talking to God. You're talking to the devil. We can talk intimately with him. Calling God Father, I said earlier, was a bombshell to the people who live in crisis day. They wouldn't dare do that. <coughs> because they consider God to be unapproachable. And when they got the notion that God was unapproachable, was in the temple and the high priest but only the high priest could go in and, and approach him. But when the veil of the temple was ran, that veil of the temple reminded them that they were not to go back there. But when Jesus died on Calvary, that temple was, the, the, the veil was rent from top to bottom, giving every one of us direct access to God. And every one of you are a priest, and you have the right to go boldly to the throne of grace on your own behalf. The aromatic word for father I alluded to earlier was daddy or uh, papa. And that's what Jesus said for us to pray. We should yearn to call him Abba Father. That, that closeness, get, see, you can be, if, if you're comfortable with him, then you're not ashamed to approach him. And you can make all of your needs, you can cause him to know. He, now keep in mind, he knows everything. And he said that he knows your needs until he teaches you to pray. You pray for your needs, even though he already knows your needs. And when we get to give us this day our daily bread, I, I talk to you more about that. The Lord knows that you need bread. But he wants you to ask for it. And I think to go around eating and not asking for it and not giving thanks for it is kind of like uh, stealing. Then one reason uh, God gives us the, the Holy Spirit is to remind us that we are his children. And that's in uh, Romans 8, 15. The Holy Spirit constantly reminds us that we are 
children of God. And we got to be children of God through the spirit of adoption. And, and, and here is a Baptist distinction. The equality of membership. That uh, when uh, Josh Boy accepted Christ, accepted Christ, he was brought into the family of God as a full grown man. He wasn't brought in as a, in other words, he got the same rights and privileges that all of the rest of us have. It does not matter how long we've been in the church. And, and this comes down to the doctrine of who can vote in the church. Some folks are 15, 16, and I've always argued that once they become a, a member of the church, that they have a right to vote because they weren't brought in as a youngster, as a child. They were brought in as a full grown man. And the moment they accepted Christ, there was an act and a joint act with uh, Jesus Christ. My wife and I have some joint bank accounts. And should she write a check on one of them, at no point we call them police. <laughs> she has a right to write a check on that account. <laughs> <laughs> she has a right to write a check on that account. And we has a right to lay claim <coughs> to everything that God has because we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we got that privilege through prayer. I'm cut off because it's already late.